Our final speaker is Dr. Vikas Goyal. Dr. Goyal is a general pediatrician at uh, Vinayak Hospital in um, Gandhi Dam uh, Ho, and he has been part of the healthcare system there since 2007. Uh, he will present on the management of the umbilical cord, its challenges and future. Dr. Goyal. Thank you. So <clears throat> beginning with the first with the terminologies, early cord clamping is less than 30 seconds. Usually it is done in 10 to 15 seconds. Delayed cord clamping, it is time-based more than 30 seconds up to 180 seconds. Then there is another term called umbilical cord milking. In that also two things, impact cord milking and cut cord milking. So first we go to history of this. Before 17th century, it was an usual practice to deliver, to cut the cord after the placenta is delivered. And till now in certain parts of our country in rural India, they are practicing the same thing. They will not cut the cord until the placenta is delivered. Earliest evidence of cord cutting before delivery were in 17th century. At that time also, the practice was to cut cord after cessation of pulsation. And at that time, wise men were present like Charles, which wrote that the common method of tying and cutting the navel string in the instant the child is born has nothing to plead in its favor, but a custom. Also, Darwin warned everybody that very another thing very injurious to child is the tying and cutting of the navel string too soon. Then how it started? So when we dig up, we have found that with the active management of third stage of labor, in that you require to remove the placenta manually and you have to see when the cord has lengthened. So what would they started doing? They immediately cut the cord and see for that thing and separate the baby from the mother. Second is in 1940s, there was a concern regarding isoimmunization so to prevent the transfer of excessive maternal antibodies, they have started cutting the cord immediately after birth. Also, the next culprit was the Abgar score. Because on Abgar score, it is written that you will identify the initial score is done after 60 seconds of clamping the cord. Of clamping the cord. This led to early clamping. And the main thing is our physiology books. What they are writing? that the fetal to neonatal transition occurs after clamping the cord. No, it is not physiology. It is not physiology. Only Gray's Anatomy writes that no. All other physiology books were writing that after clamping the cord, there is a transition from fetal to neonatal circulation. That was a wrong thing which was inculcated in our science. Now to understand better, I will show you this. Uh, I think it's not working. I will show you this slide of fetal circulation. This is very important to know because still, till now, not many of us are very much convinced why we have to delay the cord clamping. Now, in this figure, you can see the fetal circulation. So, from umbilicus, the oxygenated blood is going through inferior vena cava into right atrium, and from there through foramen oval the whole of this blood is reaching the left side of the heart. And from the left side, the blood is going pumped into aorta and it supplies the upper part of the body. So the preload on the left side mainly is through this blood. However, the pulmonary vein also supplies blood to the left, left heart, but that percentage is only 8%. So remember, the majority of preload which is coming to the left ventricle in fetus is from the umbilical veins. Now, what happens after birth? After birth, as soon as the baby cries or breathes, the PVR decreases and the pulmonary blood flow increases. Now the pulmonary blood flow becomes the main, main uh, source of preload in the left heart. Then what mistake we are making? As soon as a baby is born, we are cutting the cord. So what we are doing, the baby is still has not uh, started crying or breathing or anything else. So what will happen? The preload, which was coming from the umbilicus has been cut off 
and the blood which should have been come from the pulmonary vein through lungs has not come so there is a sudden drop of preload into the left will lead to decreased cardiac output and bradycardia so this is very detrimental so these are the hemodynamic effects of early cord cutting so as you all know immediate cord clamping restricts the baby's ability to deal with the transition from fetal to neonatal circulation now impact of immediate cord clamping sir icc before the establishment of ventilation leads to rapid decrease in cardiac output as i have already explained this leads to large fluctuations in systemic and cerebral hemodynamics causes hypoxia bradycardia and there is increase in incidence of ivh and nec and these are very much true for preterm babies those babies who are not breathing at birth this is very much true for all of them now coming to the hematological effect at birth the infant to placental ratio of blood is 1/3 in placenta and 2/3 in fetus so as soon as the baby is born the uterus starts contracting and this contraction leads to provides so provides an additional transfusion of 10 to 15 ml per kg which is an enough iron store for a baby for 3 to 6 months so it is clearly beneficial for the babies more so in our country where we see anemia so much now these are the studies so the rise in hemoglobin within 24 hours after, after birth nine studies the rise was 1.17 g after 24 hours and after 7 days it was 1.11 the rise in hematocrit was 3.38 after 24 hours now coming to the potential benefits in term babies what can be the potential benefits first as i have already said it reduces incidence of anemia and iron deficiency it also improves hemodynamic parameter better attainment of spo2 after birth and stabilization of heart rate better cerebral oxygenation increased cardiac output greater mean blood pressure in the first few hours after birth and less chances of requirement of resuscitation at birth now benefits in preterm it improves survival all the benefits in term babies are there in preterm extra benefits are it improves survival improves hemodynamics there is reduced use of inotropes reduced need of blood transfusion however at present there is no definitive evidence to prove that dcc reduces major neonatal morbidity the problem is because we are not doing dcc in sick babies as soon as the baby is born if he is not breathing the current protocol is to shift the baby away and we have to cut the cord so these studies are not representative now i will give you a brief of different resuscitation councils different countries which have changed modified their uh, guidelines now the first is this european resuscitation council guideline 21 they have said that the aim should be to delay clamping the cord for at least 60 second a longer period may be more beneficial and they have specifically said that clamping should ideally take place after the lungs are aerated and whenever there are adequate thermal care and initial resuscitation interventions which can be safely done at on the mother side then even if the baby is not breathing at birth you should try to delay the cord as as much as you can and where delayed cord clamping is not possible consider cord milking in infants more than 28 weeks because doing cord milking in less than 28 weeks has shown to increase ivh so this is a poster from the european resuscitation council in their five top messages the first comes is delayed cord clamping so you can see the importance of it delayed cord clamping can optimize condition especially in the preterm infants also this is uh, anscor newborn guidelines they also suggest the same thing that it should be delayed for more than 60 seconds and uh, cord milking should not be done below 28 weeks this is who recommendation that the cord should be not be clamped earlier than 1 minute after birth and when newly born term or preterm babies require positive pressure ventilation the cord should be clamped and cut to allow effective ventilation to be performed so they have also said that those who do not breathe spontaneously after birth they should be at least given some time of drying and assessment and stimulation before cutting the cord rather than as soon as the baby comes out of the womb the 
everybody rushes to cut the cord. As soon as the baby will come out, the gynecologist and his assistant, everybody will rush to cut the cord immediately so that to take the baby to the pediatrician. This should not happen. This is now ACOG recommendation that at least 30 to 60 seconds after birth in vigorous term and preterm infant. This is AP's guidelines for most vigorous term and preterm and term newborns. Clamping should be delayed for at least 30 to 60 seconds. Now coming to the challenges. The first challenge comes from the obstetric scenes. So whenever you are planning this delayed cord clamping, you should discuss it with the obstetrician and also with the mother because you will keep the baby onto the mother's abdomen. So you should take both of them uh, with you and discuss plan why you are doing it, that you should tell them very clearly. Where to keep baby after vaginal delivery? Some, words, some people are saying that we should keep the baby below the level of uterus so that the blood will flow. Somebody say at the level. But remember, as I've already said, it is the uterine contraction that is pushing the blood so it doesn't matter whether you keep the baby at the level or above. There is no significant difference. So the <clears throat> ideal thing is to keep the baby onto the mother's abdomen. One more question which comes is, do DCC increases maternal complication in LSCS? Because in LSCS, uh, obstetricians are very much worried. Everything is open and you are uh, wasting one or two minutes. So a study has been done. Uh, there is no increase in PPH or blood loss, even if we do it for uh, 90 seconds. <coughs> Sorry. Now, then other challenge is, what are the chances of hyperbilirubinemia? Yes, as the uh, blood increases in the uh, baby, 10 to 15 ml per kg, extra blood is there. So there are increased chances of hyperbilirubinemia. But they are not in the coronary terrace range. They never reach to coronary terrace range and can be easily managed. Then the question arises, which is better? Delayed cord clamping or umbilical cord milking? I have already given you the answer. Delayed cord clamping is better because UCM is not beneficial below 28 weeks and it does not, it is not physiological again. So we should do what is physiological. Then the main question arises because still every guideline is speaking of delaying cord clamping in vigorous baby. But what about non-vigorous baby? Because by definition, these are the babies that require delayed cord clamping. So one or two councils have addressed this issue. Now they are saying at least you should perform initial steps, initial steps onto the mother's abdomen. And then when it is necessary to re ventilate the baby, then only you should take away the baby from the mother. <clears throat> Delayed cord clamping in twin pregnancy. So if there is monochorionic twin, then you should not delay the cord clamping. But in dichorionic twin, you can delay the cord clamping as you are doing in others. Now, <clears throat> coming to the future. What is the future of all this? Now, there is a new term which is coming that is physiological based cord clamping. It means clamping the umbilical cord at a time when a baby is fully stable and breathing on its own. The timing of cord clamping is determined by the baby's own condition instead of any fixed time. For the reason of study, it was defined as when the child achieves a heart rate of more than 100 beats per minute, SpO2 of 85% while using supplemental oxygen less than 40 and this is a very big study which is going on in Netherlands it is known as ABC3 trial and in this trial uh, what they are doing they are taken preterm babies less than 30 weeks into the study and they have devised a unique table I will show you the picture this is a unique table this is known as Concord custom made table they have made that can be put just above the mother's abdomen and it has got a slit. You can see the slit. <coughs> so the cord can remain intact and the baby can be resuscitated if required. It is with radiant warmers. Everything is attached to it. Monitors are attached to it. And they are doing a very large study. And if the uh, end point of this study is to compare between deferred cord clamping that usual time-based DCC and this physiological-based 
uh, cord clamping and uh, they are looking at primary outcomes are incidence of IVH, incidence of NEC in these babies. So this is the future and this study is still going on. I think within a year, this study will be published. It is a multi-centric study uh, done in Netherlands. So friends, I want to once again emphasize you. Now they are saying that we should do delayed cord clamping. So what message we are giving to everybody? That it is something new. It is something new that we have to practice. The right word should be, we should, we should abandon early cord clamping. Because delayed is normal, early was an aberration. So instead of saying everywhere that we should practice delayed cord clamping, it comes out that we have to do one more work. The neurologist said, one more work to me. No, you have to abandon the wrong practice of early cord clamping. And I request you all to please, please consult, please do consultation with your obstetric team. Convince them about the need. It is not hematological only. It is not hematological only. It is hemodynamics, which is more important. And it will be very much important for preterm babies. At least in the preterm babies, you should never do clamping within 5 to 10 seconds as the practice, as we are doing it now currently. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Goyal. Uh, I think we have plenty of time for questions. So let's go ahead and open up the microphones. Yeah, yes. So uh, my question to Dr. Upadhyay, you have said that in India, there is uh, no recommendation for antenatal steroids. You have shown, yeah, 